Hello, in this video, I'll be explaining the function of the hippocampus proper to help you understand better how the hippocampus works. Generally speaking, the function of the hippocampus proper includes encoding and retrieving spatial memories, episodic memories, autobiographical memories, context-dependent learning, being able to tell how much time has passed from one event to another, and more. The hippocampus proper is a part of the hippocampus and is composed of four sections, the CA1 region, the CA2 region, the CA3 region, and the CA4 region. These uh, four sections come together to make a kind of a biological circuit composed of neurons that encode and process different types of memories and information. The function of the CA1 region. The CA1 region is the first region of the hippocampal neural circuit which outputs information to the V layer of the interhenal cortex and to the subiculum. The CA1 region accepts input from the CA2 region and the CA3 region. The CA2 region sends temporal data, whereas the CA3 region sends spatial data. The CA1 region then combines both the temporal and spatial information into one, so one of the functions of the CA1 region may be to be able to produce combined spatial temporal code that allows an animal to distinguish the memory of two events from each other even if they occur at the same place but in different times. Another function of the CA1 region is the retrieval of episodic autobiographical memories. Specifically, one study examined patients who suffered a rare acute transient global amnesia, meaning a full uh, amnesia that does not last. These patients are observed to have lesions that are focused and confined to the CA1 field of the hippocampus. It was observed from these patients that uh, CA1 lesions cause a disturbance to autobiographical memory for all time periods, including 30 to 40 years into the past. These results indicate that the function of the CA1 region is an autobiographical memory retrieval that allows a person to re-experience detailed episodic memories about their past. The role of the CA1 and the CA3 regions in context-dependent learning. Another function of the CA1 and CA3 regions includes a type of context-dependent learning. Specifically, the CA1 and the CA3 regions contribute to the acquisition of context-dependent extinction, but only the uh, CA1 area is required for contextual memory retrieval. But what does this mean? To understand, first know that scientists may conduct tests based on Pavlovian fear conditioning. For example, in this study, the scientists presented to lab rats a conditional stimulus, um, for example, auditory sound, uh, simultaneously with an unconditional stimulus, for example, a foot shock. By doing so, the scientists trained the lab rats to associate the auditory sound with the foot shock, so that when the auditory sound is presented, even in the absence of the foot shock, the lab rats freeze up in anticipation of the foot shock. Then the conditional stimulus is presented again and again without the unconditional stimulus, causing the rats to learn to no longer associate the auditory sound with the foot shock so that they eventually stop freezing up when presented with the conditional stimulus. In other words, the lab rats learn to decrease their fear response and that this is known as fear extinction. Fear extinction is an inhibitory type of learning that allows animals to adapt their behavior to a changing environment. But do note that extinction is not the erasure of the original learning, but rather it involves new learning. So in the first experiment, lesions were made on the CA1 or CA3 region before the fear extinction training. Scientists found that context dependence of fear extinction was eliminated. Understand that the word context refers to the environment that the rats received conditional stimulus, the auditory sound. So that means scientists found that those lesioned rats had extinguished fear that was no longer dependent on the environment that they received the conditional stimulus. Normal rats would experience a renewal of their extinguished fear if they received the conditional stimulus in a new environment. But the CA1 or CA3 uh, re lesioned rats did not experience that renewal in fear, showing that both the CA1 region and the CA3 region is involved in the acquisition or encoding of context-dependent fear extinction. 
If you ask me, it's like the rats need the CA1 and CA region for a triple association, meaning that they learn not to fear the auditory sound on the condition that the environment is the same and if there is no foot shock. If the environment changes, then the rats would fear the auditory sound. So the CA1 and CA3 regions cause the rats to be able to make spatial associations in their learning. In the second experiment, lesions were made on the CA1 or CA3 region after the fear extinction training. Scientists found that only the CA1 lesions uh, impaired the context dependence of fear extinction. To explain, know that after the rats learned fear extinction, those that got lesions to the CA3 region could still associate the context with their fear extinction, meaning that these rats experienced fear renewal when provided with the auditory uh, sound a new environment and without the foot shock. But the rats that received lesions to their CA1 region after the fear extinction training could no longer associate the context to their fear extinction. So these rats would not experience fear renewal to the auditory sound even if their environment changed. That means the CA1 region is required for contextual memory retrieval. In other words, the function of the CA1 region is to deliver contextual spatial memory that is associated with fear extinction or a conditional stimulus. Without the CA1 region, an animal wouldn't be able to tell which specific environment it learned not to respond to a conditional stimulus. The function of the CA2 region the CA2 region is a part of the hippocampus proper sandwiched in between the CA1 region and the CA3 region, and the CA2 region receives input from the layer 2 of the interhenal cortex through the perforant pathway. Note that the perforant pathway is a connective route from the interhenal cortex to all other regions of the hippocampus formation including the dentatic iris. The CA2 region contains pyramidal cells that are more similar to the CA3 than CA1 region, and the CA2 region neurons carry less spatial information than those in other CA regions. These findings are consistent with the idea that the CA2 neurons play some part in spatial processing, although perhaps not to the extent uh, to its neighboring CA1 and CA3 regions. The CA2 region also contains place fields. A place field is a designated place that activates specific place cells in an animal. And a place cell is a type of pyramidal neuron in the hippocampus that activates when the animal enters a specific place in its environment. In other words, an animal can map its physical environment with a neural representation consisting of place cells. And so a distinguishing feature of the CA2 region is that its place fields change more in response to the passage of time than in response to alterations in the shape of a context. So that means CA2 region encodes time information more strongly than spatial information. In other words, changes in time engages the CA2 region more so than spatial changes, which is like changes in the environment. Note that the CA2 region sends its temporal information to the CA1 region, and the CA3 region sends its spatial information to the CA1 region. The CA1 region uh, receives inputs from both of these regions, as well as others, and combines the two inputs, producing spatial temporal information or time-dependent information. In other words, the CA1 region produces spatial information that has a time stamp on it. For example, if a rat visits the same place twice, the spatial information might be the same, but the time uh, will be different. So although the CA3 region may register the space as the same for both visits, the CA2 region would register the time of the events as different, and the CA1 region would combine both space and time information, producing two distinct spatial temporal data sets registering that two distinct events occurred, even if it is in the same place. I believe it is because of the temporal function of the CA2 region and the CA2 region's input to the CA1 region that we can notice and register the passage of time even in the same environment. The CA2 region also has a function pertaining to social behavior, evident by the CA2 area containing pyramidal neurons that express high levels of receptors for social neuropeptides like vasopressin and oxytocin, so the CA2 region may be involved in social memory processing. When scientists silence CA2 neurons, it resulted in the impairment of social recognition memory. 
However, the hippocampus dependent memory tasks were not harmed, such as novel object recognition and spatial memory. For example, mice with CA2 neuron silencing were unable to differentiate between new and familiar mice, demonstrating that the CA2 region is essential for social memory encoding. The CA3 uh, regional functions. The CA3 region uh, receives input from both the mossy fibers of the granule cells in the dentate gyrus and from cells in the interhenal cortex through the perforant pathway. The CA3 region is considered to be the pacemaker of the hippocampus and thereby has a big role in learning. Let me explain. When the CA3 region is artificially activated, it mimics the neuronal activities found during a seizure. From this piece of information alone, you'll be able to get an idea of what the function of the CA3 region may be to help you understand why seizures are relevant. Let me uh, take alcoholics as an example. People who drink alcohol suppress the activity of their central nervous system, or CNS. The result is that long-term potentiation, LTP, of, ne uh, of uh, neuronal synapses that is required for learning is reduced. And long-term depression, also known as LTD, uh, that is associated with forgetting is increased. Severe alcoholics who suddenly stop drinking alcohol experience extreme withdrawal symptoms, including seizures. So what does seizures tell you about the CA3 region of the hippocampus? Well, first know that seizures are caused by the overactivation of neurons, resulting in abnormal electrical activity. So what does this example tell you about how the CA3 region of the hippocampus works? My conjecture is that depending on the amount of stimulation you receive to the CA3 region, it controls the LTP and the LTD of the hippocampal synapses for remembering and forgetting. If there is a disturbance in the CA3 region, then the hippocampal LTP and LTD will become abnormal. So we may need a healthy function of the CA3 region of the hippocampus proper for proper learning. When we learn a piece of information, our brain retains what is most salient or important and forgets the less relevant details. For this reason, you may want to study in a learning environment with less stimuli or distractions so that the information you are learning becomes more salient to your brain compared to the background noise, which is uh, relatively none if you study in a quiet environment. I personally find that working in a noisy environment such as with music decreases the amount of information you encode and retain from a study session. Noisy environments not only increase cortisol levels, which can cause atrophy of the hippocampus if the exposure is for a long time, but also disrupts the electrical wave rhythm set by the CA3 region. The CA3 region functions as a pacemaker. My conjecture is that it controls how sensitive the hippocampus is to LTP and LTD. After a consideration, albeit a bit off topic, is that the hippocampus is one of the primary regions of the brain that causes epilepsy through abnormal function or irregular function. That means if a person's hippocampus is damaged, say by falling on one's head, then his chance for acquiring epilepsy is increased. Due to this association, many seizure patients used to end up having their hippocampus and related brain regions surgically removed as an attempt to cure their epilepsy. Of course, the prime example is with patient HM. To summarize, the CA1 region is responsible for combining temporal and spatial data from the CA2 and CA3 regions. The CA1 and CA2 regions help with acquiring context-dependent extinction, and the CA2 region encodes temporal data and the CA3 region encodes spatial uh, information and acts as the pacemaker of the hippocampus. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'd appreciate if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye!